So a restaurant owner called the police and said a customer had stolen a large sum of money. When the police arrived, the restaurant security guard already had three suspects. Thomas said, I was just walking along the street. I didn't even enter your restaurant. Dylan was angry. I've never been to this place before. I was sitting in my car when that guy ran up to me and started throwing accusations. John said, I did visit the restaurant yesterday, but I just came in to get a coffee and didn't stay longer than five minutes. After listening to the suspects, the police arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Dylan. His car was parked in the place reserved for regular clients, but he claimed he'd never been to the restaurant before. Harrison was walking home when someone threw a bag over his head and knocked the guy out. When he came around, he found himself in a room with four doors and a tiny window. Harrison opened the window, but it was too small for him to squeeze through. Suddenly, the guy spotted a piece of paper lying on the floor. It was a note that said, Only one door leads outside. The other three don't lead anywhere. You can try to open just one door, and only once. If you don't succeed, all of them will get locked forever. Harrison thought for a while and made the right choice. How did he figure it out? He opened the window. This created a draft. The guy checked the keyholes and felt some cool air coming from one of them. It was the door to freedom. It was Sunday morning when a submarine captain found one of his sailors lying unconscious on his bunk. Someone had hit him on the head. It could only be another crew member. The captain had three suspects, Mateo, David, and Owen. He questioned them, and that's what they said. Mateo, I couldn't do it. I was checking the equipment in the machinery compartment. David, when it happened, I was washing dishes left after dinner. Owen, at that moment, I was busy posting a new video on TikTok. Who was lying? It was Owen. People can't use the internet for personal purposes on submarines. Leo studied art in college and rented an apartment together with his friend Andrew. Leo had bad eyesight and was wearing his glasses at all times. One day, Andrew didn't notice Leo's glasses and accidentally sat on them. They were beyond repair. Leo was so furious, he shouted at his friend, and Andrew ran away. Leo called his girlfriend and asked her to give him a lift to the optician. He couldn't drive without his glasses. They were turning onto the main road when they spotted Andrew. He was lying in the bushes, unmoving. Leo immediately called the police and ambulance. Andrew was taken to a hospital, and a police officer started to question the witnesses. Leo told him, My girlfriend was behind the wheel when I spotted Andrew. We immediately stopped and called you. We didn't see anything suspicious. The police officer arrested Leo. Why? With such poor eyesight and without glasses, how could he notice Andrew lying in the bushes? Lily called the police. She found her neighbor, a famous artist, on the floor of his apartment. The unconscious man was quickly rushed to a hospital. The police had three suspects. Lily said, I live next door. I heard some shouting and loud bangs. I went to check on what was going on and found him on the floor. Zachary told the police the artist was his friend. We agreed to meet at the restaurant, and I came to give him a lift. And Cooper said, I ordered a painting from him, but when I came to pick it up, I saw the police. Who's guilty? It's Zachary. If they agreed to meet at the restaurant, why did he come to the artist's apartment? You wake up locked in a room with no windows and just one automatic door. Above the door, there's a large screen. Suddenly, it turns on. You hear a voice. It sounds muffled. Crack this riddle and you're free to go. 
If not, the room will be filled with toxic gas in 5 minutes. After that, you see the riddle. What could it mean? Hopefully, you'll realize in time that it means sitting on top of the world. Look at these mirrors and say which one is magical. It's the one the girl in the middle is holding. Apparently, it helped her get rid of her mole. A businessman's about to go through a security check at the airport when he realizes someone's taken his luggage. Airport security officers have three suspects. Anna says she doesn't need someone's old bag. She has her own, thank you very much. Mike answers he's a light traveler and doesn't have luggage. He keeps everything in his backpack. James says he's been in a car accident recently. His arm's broken and he has a sprained ankle. He can hardly carry anything. In no time, the security officers arrest the thief. Can you figure out who it is? It's Anna. Nobody told her the bag was old. Several police officers are following a criminal. He hid in a random house. When the officers entered the building, they saw a costume party was going on and the criminal pretended to be one of the guests. The police looked at the people and soon figured out who the criminal was. How did they understand it? It's the man in the black cape. Unlike other partygoers, he seemed to throw on everything he had at hand. Iron Man's helmet, Batman's cape, and Hulk's pants. Two young women disappeared one by one in a small town. The police found an envelope with a strange code in the first girl's apartment. In the second woman's house, they discovered another envelope, this time with a weird table. It was empty, but several squares were darker than the rest. The detective suspects the girl who will vanish next might be Madeline, Melanie, or Ariana. Can you figure out which one it'll be? After studying the coat and the table, the detective realized it would be Madeline. One day, before a popular blogger conference, the security of the building where it was going to take place got a strange message. One of the bloggers is going to be kidnapped tomorrow. It'll either be Monica or Leslie. It was too late to cancel the whole thing. That's why the security officers decided to keep a close eye on the girls. During the event, the girls weren't talking to anyone suspicious. Everything and everyone looked perfectly normal. But suddenly, it became clear who was plotting against one of the girls. Can you figure it out? It was Monica. Look at that rope in her bag. She was going to get rid of her competitor. Aaron was preparing for his test for ages. He was sure his answers were correct and he'd get an A. But several days later, the teacher told the guy he wanted to talk to him. It turned out Aaron had made a tiny mistake and the professor couldn't give him the highest mark. But, the teacher said, if you manage to solve one riddle, I'll give you an A. Aaron wanted to have a good mark. Of course, he agreed. That's what his teacher showed him. After thinking for several minutes, Aaron answered, and it was correct. What did he say? In between jobs. Maria was walking home from work when she heard screaming. It was coming from the house she was passing by. The girl immediately ran in to help. She followed the voice, and it brought her to the basement. As soon as she walked in, the door slammed shut. Suddenly, three portals opened in front of her, but only one of them led to safety. The first portal was filled with giant poisonous snakes. In the second portal, there was a huge suspended rock. It would crash down the moment someone stepped in. 
In the third portal, five hungry crocodiles were waiting for Maria. Luckily, the girl chose the safe portal and managed to escape. Which portal was it? She picked the second one. Maria threw her shoes inside, waited for the massive stone to drop, and then walked away. Two men were playing chess. They'd already played five games, and each man had won three of them. How is it possible? The men were playing with different opponents, not with each other. Sarah and Liam had a son named Oliver. On Saturday, the couple went out for dinner and left Oliver at home. When they returned, the boy was nowhere to be found. The anxious parents called the police. A detective arrived and questioned everyone in the house. The babysitter said she'd been packing Oliver's school bag for the next day. The maid said she'd spent the whole evening cleaning the kitchen. And the cook said he had been preparing food for the next day. He was listening to music and didn't hear anything. The police immediately knew who was lying. And what about you? It was the babysitter. Children don't go to school on Sundays, so Oliver didn't need his school bag to be packed. 